Hi, here's a truth I've discovered. The secret to power and fruitfulness in a Christian's life lies in loving, studying, trusting, and obeying the Word of God. Hi, I'm Kenneth Thatcher. Welcome to Studying Like the Greats. This is a series of Bible study tutorials where I distill skills I've learned from some of the greatest Bible students, Bible expositors, and I go over paragraph by paragraph showing you how to be able to put them into your own life. And while we're doing that, we're actually exposing the scriptures and learning and getting transformed and meditating on the Word of God at the same time. I did a lot of work. It took me years and I documented these principles in my book, Inductive Bible Study. And I'm going to be unpacking them for you here and really just showing you how to study God's Word and be able to do that and come out with power, anointing, and a connection and understanding that many people don't see. Let's get into it. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to observe this passage now and again our focus is in having fun studying the Word of God and using the skills that the most powerful exegetes that are believers who have studied the Word and obeyed it and have seen fruit in their ministry and anointing and power, the skills that they use and I've studied them and I share them with you as I put them into my life too. So we're going to be just doing that and meditating on the Word of God as we do it. So as we look here, Paul, something we're going to be asking ourselves when we're studying and see a name like this, we have to wonder who's Paul? That's one question we must ask and take time to figure that out. And if you've been at Bible study for a while, Paul will be a very common name for you. And if not, you can take some time to be able to learn about Paul. And and I'll give you some tips in, in a little bit here about um, a little bit about Paul and the church in Ephesus so that you can then build off of that. Then we see next here an apostle. So Paul is an apostle of Christ Jesus Okay, what is an apostle is a question you must ask yourself. What is an apostle? Is it some kind of title, uh, some office? What is it? And he's an apostle of Christ Jesus. Okay, so Jesus had apostles. And the word apostle simply means a, a messenger, someone who's sent. And it could apply uh, to to the 12th apostles of Christ and Paul, people who saw Jesus Christ um, face to face and received teaching from him. And those were the primary apostles. Okay. So you, but there were other people in the church that were called apostles who never saw Jesus. Uh, they were more like church planters and missionaries, certain of them because they had the gifts of apostleship. They were also called apostles and, and that's okay, but that's not to confuse them with the key apostles like Paul. And we might do a video later to, to just talk about the difference between apostles in the Bible and 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 now. But for you, you could you could look that up. So apostles of Christ Jesus by the will of God. What does Paul mean here when he says that he's an apostle of Jesus by the will of God? What does what does he mean by that? The, uh, obviously, he he seems to be saying that he is holding this office of apostleship because. God chose him, and in the book of Acts, when you, which provides really great background for studying the book of Ephesians, you will see that Jesus encountered Paul and on the road to Damascus and called him into ministry and gave him this role of apostleship to the Gentiles. So that's a little bit. So that's a little bit about Paul. So Paul here. So we see here this phrase describes Paul. The the the. Apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God here describes who Paul is. Okay, and uh, Paul say, writes a letter to the saints. So that so Paul is the the author, and then he writes a letter to the saints. Uh, it, he writes a letter to the saints, 
and and these saints are people who are in Ephesus. Okay, so to the saints who are in Ephesus here describe the saints. That's one thing about the saints that Paul wants us to know. They're in Ephesus. And then the second thing joined here by this uh, connective here and is that they are faithful in Christ Jesus. And these are all important things. So these saints are faithful in Christ Jesus. And you, you, you're probably, when you read this text like this, you, you need to wonder, what, is, what are saints? Well, the Greek word here simply refers to holy ones. So you might say saints are holy ones. And this is basically a title Paul is applying to all Christians that are truly Christians that are born again and are faithful to, to Jesus. They are holy ones. And keep that thought in mind, the, the, how Paul is addressing the holy ones here, because that's going to have import on the rest of the book. And uh, we continue to see here. So uh, then Paul, Paul, the author, writes to the saints, the holy ones who are in Ephesus and are faithful, two things about them, Ephesus and they are faithful. That's who Paul is writing to. If you are not in Ephesus and you are not faithful to Christ Jesus, Paul is not writing to you. He's writing to those people. That's so important, again, when we get to the middle of the book. He tells them, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that's nice, Paul. You're telling him grace to you and peace from God, our Lord, uh, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do you say that? Um, where did you learn to say this? Does it mean anything? Is it just like you know, uh, you know, meeting somebody and saying good morning or good afternoon or you know, God bless you? Uh, like, is it? Does Paul actually mean what he's saying here as in, is he by these words, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, is Paul actually imparting grace and peace from God our Fa Father and the Lord Jesus Christ on them by saying that? You know, uh, when I think about this greeting, it, rem it reminds me of the, the ironic blessing uh, you should check that out. Just um, If you don't know where it is, just Google. You'll be able to find the ironic blessing. Go and compare it. The ironic blessing was given to the Israelites. And the command there was for Aaron and his sons to be able to say these blessings. The ironic blessing has the same features as this. And they were to say it to the uh, on the people of Israel. And when they speak out the ironic blessing on the people, God will put his blessings on them. So, if that's true, one may guess then that perhaps when Paul speaks to these people and tells them grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, he is walking in a way uh, uh, do, uh, and doing the kinds of blessings that God tells the priests of the Old Testament to be able to speak on the people, the ironic blessing, so that uh, God would bless the people. So uh, th 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 there's a lot to be able to think about when we observe, when we start observing just this passage here. And I don't want to spend too much time because we could go deep and deep and deep into this. I, I want to provide some pointers for you to be able to build up. up, up. And, and when you start a new book like we're doing right now to study, you got to think about the author, Paul, the audience, and you want to find out, okay, some info important information. Uh, how did the author get to know the audience? Like, why is Paul writing them? Like, how did he get to know them? Well, if you go into the book of Acts, you would see that the gospel likely got to Ephesus through Priscilla and Aquila, they were a tent-making family that Paul left in Ephesus, and you can see that in the book of uh, Acts, Acts chapter 18, verse 18 to 19. That was during his second uh, second missionary journey. Paul later returned to Ephesus during his third missionary journey and, and pastored the church there for about two to three years. When Paul uh, left Ephesus, he kept Timothy there to pastor the church, uh, and Paul wrote letters to Timothy uh, in First Timothy uh, chapter 3, you can see that Paul gave instructions to Timothy. Uh, he told him to command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer or to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. And 
uh, Paul uh, sent uh, Timothy uh, to, um, uh, to to pastor this church and to help him be able to discharge these duties. And, and about 30 years after uh, Timothy pastored the church, uh, the uh, history holds that the Apostle John also taught in Ephesus towards the end of his life. Uh, and when he was on the island of Patmos in prison, and the Lord appeared to him and asked him to write the book of Revelation, Paul, uh, rather John this time, addressed the church in Ephesus in that book and God commended them in the book of Revelation. You can you can go and look at this, the, the first few chapters in the book of Revelation. Uh, and God commended them for their hard work and perseverance and the fact that they didn't tolerate wicked people, but he also accused them of forsaking their first love and commanded them to repent and do the things they did at first. So this church is an important church uh, in the Bible and in history, to be honest. And so it's um, it's important to get some background as you study the book, uh, as you begin to understand the information about the author uh, and the audience. Okay, you, you need to think about when Paul would have written this letter and why he wrote it. And something that many good exegetes do that I've, I've studied and I've copied that and I do myself now. And by exegete, I mean a person who study who exegetes God's word and is able to study well. So powerful men of God and women of God who know how to study the Bible is how you can think of it. What they often do when they want to study a book, especially those who are living today, is that they quickly research the book briefly, not too much, spending too much time. They read in a commentary, one that I, I, I've seen many people use, and I, I use myself briefly, is the, the John MacArthur, uh, the MacArthur commentary. And or you can use another commentary like that. The, the MacArthur commentary is a whole Bible commentary, so it's going to give you just a short blurb on the book of Ephesians. It's not like a, a full book uh, um, um, uh, commentary that is also important and goes in depth and gives everything verse by verse. So, But the brief summary of the book helps you be able to sort of direct yourself as you approach the book and get some basic information. And when you do that, get that bit background information is going to answer some of the questions we're talking about here and then the next thing you do now is you start thinking about the big picture of the bible and know that the entire bible is a book that shows that god reigns supreme and is saving uh, and satisfying a people through covenant by his son for his son and for his glory. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, if that's the main theme of the Bible in, in those terms, then how does the book of Ephesians fit into that? How does the book of Ephesians fit into the New Testament teaching? So those kinds of things are background. And then the, the next thing you do after that, it, uh, um, that I do myself, having learned from many powerful men and women of God who studied the Bible, is to then read the book of Ephesians over and over several times read from the beginning to the very end and 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 go and read like that to the to the very end of the book okay and to chapter 6 and you do that in several different translations when you do that that gives you a big picture understanding of the book and that will really help you when you start getting into the need in, into the, the details which we're about to do. And so I've done that. And if you haven't read through the book before, I, I encourage you after this video to read through the book before we get into our next video as we continue to study the book. In this video, we've sort of introduced the our study of the book of Ephesians and looked at some key survey elements uh how we go about surveying a book is really just to get a big picture of the book and then in, an, in our next video we'll continue and i'll share with you um some further big picture things before we then dive into cha into chapter chapter one verse three and continue to study the book and and enjoy the word of god together again if you enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe so that you'll get the next videos and we'll continue learning and growing together. I'll see you in the next video.